collected up by the central interceptors and other interceptors costs around $4 billion over the next 20-odd years. Um, the concern we're hearing from sort of the Rodney, Frank and some of the Waitakere people is those costs have been, been socialised. You know, the ratepayers are paying for those. The costs for the outer area, which you're intimating you might bring forward for, to be quicker, will be borne by the property owners. Is that the first, is that a, a standpoint that you're working on? Yeah, uh, well, you can say generally at a national level, that's what's been happening at a rural okay. perspective, right? And that's something that we have to work through. Because we do understand, I think that's, uh, at a national level, there's quite a lot of discussion about that, exactly. And Andrew, do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, the, the question of, of equity um, between rural and urban ratepayers is, is an important one. Now, in, I'm, I don't think we're suggesting that you know, the investment is necessarily rushed or brought forward in that sense. Um, what we're saying is we need to get as quickly as possible um, a framework in place that sets limits um, and clear objectives. But the time frame for actually achieving those limits is one that we need to, to work through. And that's where questions of equity will come in and the council will need to make decisions um, about, about investment um, priorities and time frames. So three years together, the limits will be set catchment by catchment, or they'll be standardised right across the board. They'll, they'll be set. Um, at the moment, we're figuring out whether it's at the catchment level, multi catchments, or what's called a freshwater management unit. Um, I, I don't think we'd be necessarily setting catchments, uh, sorry, limits right across the region. Um, there will be national bottom lines, however, that that we'll, we will need to comply with. Two more questions. The role of NGOs in this consultation, non-government organisations. So, um, a, the accounting, catchment accounting process, and it's jargon, but that, that um, we're required to enter into and that we're proposing to collaborate, or collaborate um, <coughs> in order to achieve, will include NGOs, both um, NGOs representing sector groups and NGOs representing the environment. So they will they will be there as we're developing up that picture, that stock take effectively of what's going on in a catchment. Um, to give you an example, we're working quite closely at the moment with Horticulture New Zealand um, who are looking at developing a model for understanding um, the relationship between ground and surface water in um, Franklin Lowlands area. Um, now that model that they're developing um, uh, is, is potentially one that can be transferred to be used elsewhere in the region. Um, and so we're, we're wanting to, to understand that. We'll do that as part of that catchment accounting process. My final question, if I may, Mr Chair, is about the costs of consultation. So some groups get paid for consultation, um, others have to front foot off the science around this is very, very expensive. How are we looking at sort of working that through in a fair and equitable manner? It's a good question and that's one of the driving reasons why we've decided to take this gentle approach and try and work through existing forums and networks. So as much as possible we want to, um, to you know, well, we want to focus on value add, not work add or time add. So there is already a lot, of go a lot going on and a lot of engagement going on we don't want to double that up. Um, by, by starting out with this, a catchment, this catchment accounting, which the council needs to do, so it's statutorily required to do, so that's a cost that needs to be absorbed. And, and, and realistically, we're already doing it in, in, a, in a kind of diffuse way. So we're trying to, by bringing that together, we're hoping that there are synergies in, in costs. Um, decisions then subsequently about how we, how we formally engage um, and collaborate will need to be made by this governing body when we're talking about going into a plan change process. So you might be aware that the government put out a bill to reform the Resource Management Act um, a couple of weeks ago now, um, and in that it propose, proposes two alternative tracks for plan making, one a, um, a fast track process and one a collaborative process that would mean that we've got three options and we'd have to, we'd have to cost each one before we made a decision to go down which track and then we'd come to you for, a, for a direction about which one to take. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Um, look, I'm going to move the uh, recommendations. If I had, do I have a seconder? I'll second. Second to uh, Mr. Taipari. Um, and I, you want to speak to the recommendation, Councillor Lee? Actually, I, I have to ask your forbearance, Mr. Chairman. I have a question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is that uh, in, in the attachment one? Um, 
On page 27, one, two, three, fourth paragraph down, when you say 3rd of December 2015, you mean 2014, I take it? Or are you anticipating? I think that's a typo. Any, Sorry, no, on Mr. Third Chairman, of December, I, I support Sorry. this. Today. This is today. So, today. We're, we're, okay. so this is yes, today. You're anticipating we're... Well, it just, that, that, uh, through the well, chair, that it's impractical I, I, for us. I, I don't think that's a good idea, doing that. That's... I don't. I know you don't mean it, but that's disrespectful of of, of democracy. If you're deciding, you're writing this before what the council will what will resolve, right? So look, I was hoping it was a typo, but anyway, look, I support this, and I think we need to get on with it. Yep. We are talking about water, which is vital um, for the city, uh, for our economy, for ecosystem function, um, for life itself. And that, that is of the highest priority all of, for all those reasons. Um, but, but, but we are talking about H2O, and what, I, what I'm hearing, and that may be because of the um, influence of the independent Maori statutory board members, but it seems to be all about mana whenua, um, which are the various tribal entities around Auckland and, and beyond. And um, I, I think um, that's well and good. But this is bigger than that. This is bigger than what, what, what mana whenua groups want or don't want, or to Waka Angamua or the IMSB, or who, who actually represents mana whenua. Or, or, that's all very interesting, but this is vital, and I'd hate to see the program derailed or uh, over bureaucratized or costed out because of all this extra stuff. And um, I, I think <coughs> if we can just focus on the work, um, uh, comply with our statutory obligations under Part 2 of the Resource Management Act, and it's all in there, yep. and get the job done. Thank you. Thank you. With that, I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Aye. 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 Again, clear that carried. Thank you. We now have a five-minute five break. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. 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 Yeah, that's right.